Shout out to Trey. Yeah. yeah. Legend. Now, now, Ricky, you had a very decorated career. You were all over the headlines your entire career. Never ended. Um, from going to the Saints, to Miami, to the weed tobacco. You know what I mean? Everybody was talking about, you know, Ricky loves uh, smoking more than he loves football. You got killed by the media uh, for a long time. And I know Ricky you had, had a lot of- Ricky had foresight. He knew that this thing was going to become <laughs> legal. Yeah, yeah, he That's did. That's what it was. <laughs> like, how much would you have loved to play in the league now where they're like, you know, it's okay? I'd have been cool. I mean, you know, it would have been less stressful trying to take care of myself. No, th- there were the suspensions and everything, but at the, like the second half of my career after that started. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Ed, you, you, yeah, yeah. yeah. No we're live. Look, yeah, we're, no pressure. we're always live streaming. Country. Make sure you hit that I'm like and subscribe button. You got to go take no a piss. Pressure. Go take a piss. It's all good. Y'all keep letting me get this team on the cramp, man. It's going to get you. Damn. Yeah. You got to show them where it is. But um, go ahead. What you, what you were saying with the? Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, it would be nice. It would be nice. Just, oh, I was saying it just was so stressful because... Mm. You know, after I got in trouble, that's all anyone ever wanted to talk about. And people didn't see that I was a good football player anymore. They just wanted to focus on the weed. Crazy. And I know you had the documentary. You, you knew probably beforehand that you wanted people to know that you're a good person. Uh, that yeah. was super important to you. Yeah, so so the documentary started right after I retired because everybody was saying a whole bunch of stuff about me. And it wasn't that I was a good person. It was just was more that I was different, you know, because mm. people say – from the outside, people say, what's he doing? But people that knew me, point I was trying to make, that people that knew me, they weren't so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's, it's, it's shitty to be in sports and then have people just kind of attack you. It's and part it, of it. It's part of it, though. You know, and, and hopefully I, I think what I went through changes it and allows athletes to feel more comfortable being themselves because even after all the shit I went through – um, on the other side, people show me love now, you know, yeah. especially down in Texas. You know, they named the field and they put a statue up. Nice. That just goes to show, like, in the end, if you're willing to be true to yourself, people will get it. You just got to stick with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, you really are one of the first year kind to actually go about it in that direction and not kind of succumb to what everybody else wanted you to be. Yeah. You know, I always looked at and I felt blessed. You know, I got taken care of at a young age, but I always felt like the opportunity to be a professional athlete was bigger than just the money. It was about the platform. And I didn't think that weed would be my platform, but <laughs> <laughs> but the amount of people that I've been able to actually help, um, it's good. You know, I think it was just good for my soul, too. I think, mm, you know, certain time you're in that situation, you can almost feel, it almost can feel like slavery sometimes. Money was great, so I don't mean that part, but I just meant not being able to be yourself and feeling like you have to hide Be certain free. things that other people won't won't get. Um, and so I think that just was good for my soul to break the rules and just be myself and yeah. say, fuck it. So you left and you traveled. Mm. Where, where did you go there again? First so time? I went, the first time I went, I went to Australia. I went to Fiji. I went to Samoa. I went to Australia. I went to um, India. That was crazy. You were like living. They, 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 I know they were talking about you living in like a tent or something. You say living. I was there for maybe a month. That's you know, pretty cool. I, I, though, that's different. I, I mean, growing up, I never went camping or nothing. So, yeah, I, I just I was staying. I was staying <laughs> yeah. in this place, and I was like, all the people that was camping, they were having fun. So I said, <laughs> let's I do that. To, yeah. I went to Wool, yeah. I went to Woolworths <laughs> and got a tent. Spent about three hours trying to put that tent together. <laughs> but when I did, it was cool. That is that's that's something Landon would do. Oh, yeah. Travel the world, get a tent. Oh yeah. Absolutely. What do you what what later? What do you always say that you want to live in? Uh, I want to go to Costa Rica. Costa Rica. You, what kind of house do you want to get? Oh, it's an uh, earth pad. It's made out of you got that earth. Yeah. You got that? You can do it. Different. I want to live in a hemp house. A house yeah, made out of weed. Hello. <laughs> there you go. You see? Yeah, there I know. Go. Yeah. Little did Landon know how much he loves Ricky Williams. How we just found out today. Yeah, I'm a fan. But uh, so you you um. You know, you got a lot of backlash from that. You're yeah. traveling around the world. You're smoking. It's like, oh, well, he doesn't care about his team. And then you got the fans getting super emotional. I'm not going to lie, I know the feeling, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, Ricky Williams doesn't want to come to Buffalo. Because that's the story, yeah. you know? Why does he want to come? Oh, because Buffalo's not cool enough for him. He's yeah. coming from Texas, New Orleans. He don't want to come to Buffalo. He's too, too, he's too big for Buffalo. Heroes, Moss. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so you get, you know, you get killed for that. Um, but you, you were dealing with a lot of anxiety. At that point, I was pretty much, I was pretty much over the anxiety. The weed, I'm telling you, smoking really got my mind right. Um, was it like smoking before games? No, nah, I just would smoke after. Cal, uh, uh, who's it, Calvin Johnson? I said he would, he would light up before games. Percy Harvey. Percy Harvey. Percy recently. Oh, there's yeah. another Buffalo Bill. You see that? It just keeps popping up. All right, just keeps <laughs> popping up. Um, but uh, do no, you at feel that like... Point, at that point, I, part of the reason I left is because I was just tired of being stressed out about what people were saying about me. And so when I left, uh, I, I just was like... You went where I there was no self. I don't care. No. <laughs> I don't even care. Any, I don't have to care anymore. So I remember when I retired, dude called me up and said, hey, we want to do a, a piece on you. I said... I'm not a football player no more. So if you want to come kick it, here's where I am. You can come hang out, but I ain't yeah. a football player no more. Do you feel like your career, like you would have enjoyed your career more if you could smoke prior to games? I didn't stop smoking when I was in the league. That's That was part of the problem. Yeah. It was more of just the stress of, of trying to pass all the tests and <laughs> keeping, yeah. track, keeping track of all that stuff. I um, went through probation. You know, you I know, know but I like I said, like, like I said, you know, I believe that whatever you deep down really want to get out of a situation, that's what you get out of the situation. And for me, being an athlete, I was trying to make a difference. I didn't think it would come out this way, but when people talk about my career, I think it's a positive thing that the first thing they talk about is not football. You know? For mm -hmm. sure. So talk to me about Heisman. Not the Heisman. Yeah. The Heisman now. I mean, basically, it's just it, the message of Heisman is just be yourself, you know? Okay. I remember I had a dream, and this, this is kind of this is what woke me up. I had a dream after I retired. I had a dream that I went back to Texas, and I was at a football game, and I was in the bathroom taking a piss during the football game. And I, in my dream, I had just smoked, so I was, you know, it's kind of loud. <laughs> and in the dream, like three of the current Texas coaches walked in the bathroom. And when I heard them, I like went to hide in the stall in the dream. When I woke up, I was like, why am I hiding? I'm older than those dudes. <laughs> why am I hiding from them? And then I was like, this ain't right. You just got to be yourself. And, and so that's what Heisman is about. If, like, if that's what you, whatever, if that's what you like to do, whatever it is, do it. You know, lean no, into so that shit. It, it's, it's funny because the places you listed, must have been kind of hard to get butt out there, right? Actually, like, <laughs> honestly, that's what I thought. And the fact that it was easy, that's what made me feel like I was on, on the, the right, right track. That's what made me feel like I was on the right track. <laughs> I mean, I was, in, I was in Fiji on a bus, just a random bus. And this little this kid, he's probably 17 years old, didn't know who I was, just came up to me, started talking. He was like, you smoke? I was like, yeah. So he's like, my cousin grows. So we, we got off the bus and we drove to his cousin. Cousin's place. His cousin just came. We were like in the woods. His cousin came down the hill. Putting your life big out ass cola. Lives. This big ass cola, like this big. I had never seen it one like that before. Fifty dollars. Oh shit. You know. And then every I went to Samoa. Everywhere I went, people didn't know who I was. Just came up to me and started a conversation off of me. I was like, I call it the weed fairy. I said, <laughs> I, I must be on the right track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By the way, shout out to my guy with the cakewalk. Um, cultivate by uh, Hedge Tech. He he hit me up and he's they they got an operation out there in New York and he was like we got to get Ricky something. He calls me up immediately. Nice. Got Ricky Williams coming up there. I'm about to send Say him back. That's, yeah, see, that's the best part. Everywhere I go, people got gifts. For me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we got gifts for you too. But actually, we got gifts for ourselves. Yeah. I'll tell you this story, right? So I actually Edge you leaving, um, but they I ordered that was supposed to be here today a uh, rookie card, right? I ordered a bunch of shit. Edron James rookie card. Mm. 3,000 in the world. I got number 32. Mm. Hello. And, then, and, then it got Hello. De and then it got delayed. Uh. Won't be here to tomorrow, so when I'm going to have to catch you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna have to catch you. But I got some dope shit here for both of y'all to sign. So. Um, but like,